Hello and welcome to Theta Sigma's Doctor Who podcast number 25. In a change to the advertised programme, with the announcement of the new Doctor imminent as I'm writing this, on a train returning from a lovely weekend away with the lovely Mrs Theta Sigma's family, and even more imminent as I now come to record it, I wanted to focus on today's momentous occasion. Why is it that this announcement seems shrouded in even more mystery than that of Matt Smith and other previous Doctors? Why is it that there seems to be even more excitement surrounding this particular announcement? Is it because the announcement is of a potentially last actor to play the part of the Doctor? Assuming you believe in the Twelve Regenerations theory, that is, which I'm not sure I do anymore, though I am looking forward to a proper explanation of how that is no longer true on televised Doctor Who, which to date we've not yet been given. Is it because we're about to see a well-known actor get the keys to the TARDIS? Or is it simply that even in the last three years or so since Matt Smith took the controls, social media has become even more prevalent than it already was back then? I don't honestly know the answer to all of that. All I do know is that I personally am more excited about this particular announcement than I have been about any other regeneration announcement since I first started watching Doctor Who back in the early 1970s. As I type, I'm listening to my Matt Smith voiceover theme and being reminded that it seems like only yesterday that we were all getting excited over the announcement of his ensuing encumbrance of the TARDIS. Yet here we are just a few short years later, sitting on the edge of our seats waiting for Doctor Who Live to appear on our TV screens. Or for those that don't have access to the broadcast, sitting glued to the internet for the first hint of a name. I'll openly admit that even just here on the train travelling home, I'm getting more and more excited and praying that the train won't be delayed in any way so I don't miss the show. A number of sites and Facebook pages have speculated and asked fans to speculate about who the Twelfth Doctor will be and who they would like it to be. Should it be a woman for the first time? Should it be a black actor for the first time? Well, I'm not going to be drawn into those particular debates on this podcast. However, if you would like to know my opinions, feel free to message me and ask. But here, for what it's worth, is my wish list for the new Doctor. The actor I would love to see in the role is someone who was somewhat late to the party as far as the betting was concerned. They're a very well-known actor, and they've appeared at least twice in the Hooniverse previously. Now, before you all go shouting at your PCs, laptops and iPods... The, about the fact that he's previously appeared in the Hooniverse and therefore can't possibly play the Doctor, let me remind you of several other actors who have appeared as different characters in the show, two from the classic era and two from New Who. Peter Miles most famously played Nida in Genesis of the Daleks. Nida was a pivotal character in this story, but I have no recollection of fans back then complaining that he'd already played another character. Nor were there any complaints that he went on to play the deliciously evil Tragen in the audio adventure The Paradise of Death opposite John Pertwee. Also in the classic series, and perhaps the most obvious case for the defence, is Colin Baker. Now, let's face it people, how many of us would have actually remembered the Commander Maxill character had Baker not gone on to play the role of the Doctor? And now, of course, the Doctor is the role that Baker is most famous for. And in New Who, two companion actors played other roles before playing the companions that made them household names. Both Freema Adjaman and Karen Gillan played other characters in the show before they played Martha Jones and Amy Pond respectively. So who is it that I would like to see in the role? Well, it's Peter Capaldi, a brilliant actor as proved in both The Fires of Pompeii and The Children of Earth, also a slightly older actor. At 55, Capaldi would be the same age as William Hartnell when he took the TARDIS just under 50 years ago. However, I do think Capaldi would retain a little of the manicness that his two immediate predecessors had, whilst also being able to play an excellent straight-down-the-line Doctor, as well as being able to play the Doctor in a very dark way, as and when required. So there you have it. Not a prediction, simply my preference. Who will it be? Join me on the other side of Doctor Who Live to find out. So I got my wish, and hand on heart, I couldn't be happier. Already some areas of fandom are kicking off over the fact that Capaldi has been in Doctor Who before. Colin Baker, people, get over it. Peter Capaldi is the Doctor, and I for one am so looking forward to all that he's going to be bringing to the role. He's a brilliant actor who has so much to offer to the part, and hearing him talk on this evening's show 
There's an enthusiasm that can't help but show itself in all that his Doctor will be. All I can say right now is roll on the Christmas special, and even more, roll on season eight. And that's all for this week, the week when Peter Capaldi was announced as the 12th Doctor. Next week we will be returning to the advertised schedule. As always, thanks for listening, and I'd love to hear your views on the new Doctor. So until next week... Well, goodbye my boy. You did quite well. Quite well. Hmm. It's reassuring to know that my future is in safe hands. Thank you for listening to Theta Sigma's Doctor Who podcast. Doctor Who and its associated shows are all copyright and property of the BBC, and no infringement is intended. 